Hey, all my sister friends out there. It's so great to have you for another episode of Dr. Me First, a podcast all about authentic conversations between female physicians. As always, I am your spunky host, Dr. Erin Wiseman. I'm your colleague in medicine, and I am your coach in life. That is right. I am a physician life coach. I've been doing this since 2015, and I'll be perfectly honest, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I bring encouragement, inspiration, hope, and fun to your life and your practice. I love having these conversations with other female colleagues because it really does show everybody out there that you are not alone in medicine and that this is a community of truth speaking life-saving and fierce females who want to show their journey they want to talk about and open up subjects that are typically dark in medicine and they want to lift each other up so i am just so excited to bring you episode number 47 today this is with the lovely dr rand diab and we talk about contentedness She goes in and talks about her career uh, with her children growing up and what the next stages of life that she is going through as a female physician. I think you're really going to be intrigued with this and stick around afterwards for my kick of encouragement. All right, here we go. And we just found out that we are in the same state of Indiana as far as working clinically. So I'm really excited to have her on the podcast today. And she's going to tell you all a little bit more about herself. Thank you for having me. Um, As she said, uh, my name is Rand and I'm a physician. I'm an ophthalmologist. I've been in practice about 16 years and most of that has been in uh, Northwest Indiana. I'm also the mother of three kids and I also have a lot of things I do on the side. The main one being a nonprofit organization that I founded that runs a school. So that also keeps me busy when I'm not doctoring. Awesome. Well, I love it so much. I'm a hashtag mom of three too. So woohoo. <laughs> My split is two boys, one girl. What's your split? Same thing. Girl, then two boys. Nice. Awesome. Well, it's so great to meet you and tell our audience today the word that you picked. I picked contentedness. I feel like I'm at a point in my life where things to some degree are settling down and uh, it's a time when I really have to think about being content with what I have, with what I've accomplished, with what I'm doing, uh, with a variety of things. And um, sometimes I, I find myself thinking this is not enough. I'm not enough. I'm not doing enough. Ever, you know, different at- Applying that to different aspects of my life. And I think it's important uh, to... Uh, sometimes just say, this is enough. I'm content or work on being content. Yeah. It's so hard in the moment as we've all always been striving, going, working towards the next thing to like back off and like take a breath and be like, okay, this is now. And like you said, just kind of like embracing the moment with contentment. Yeah. And I think I'm sure it applies in other fields, but I think in medicine, especially for those of us who did a pretty traditional path, like high school, undergrad, med school, residency, straight through, which is what I did, uh, you know, you're you're always working for that next step and that next thing. And then, uh, you know, then I had my kids and then we had our first home and then we moved and we had settled down a little bit in our jobs and we got a home that we thought we'd stay in a little longer. And, uh, you know, all of that, it's like one thing after another. And then one day, it sort of all seems like it's, it's settling down and you're thinking, what's next? What am I going to do now? You know, like there should be something, there's always, I, I'm the type where there always should be something next. And I'm always taking on new projects and adding things. And I wonder if, uh, if there, that's, you know, something that I need to kind of work on saying, it's okay to sit down for a quiet evening. It's okay to have a weekend with not a lot going on. It's okay to not be doing multiple projects at once. (laughs) Why do you think, because I'm the same way, I struggle with, um, I struggle with not, with busyness. Like I'm, I'm very good about like filling my schedule and like constant movement. What do you think about it that, why we struggle with this? I think sometimes it's hard to just sit with yourself and it leaves a lot of room for the mind to think about things and that's supposed to be really good for you, I think, to sit and reflect and have that quiet time. But maybe if we've all, we've been so busy for so many years, 
we're not used to that. And maybe some of us judge ourselves by our accomplishments and by how many things we tick off in a day. So we don't know how to feel good about ourselves when we're not accomplishing in that sort of measurable way. I think you're absolutely right because it's almost like we lose, we lose that ability. So my children are pretty small. And so I'm very much like when it's the weekend, I want to have a schedule. Like we have things that we're going to do and having the third one has really pushed me to learn that sometimes it's just okay to play, like to be on the no plan plan. But I think you're so right with that point and so valid. We almost get to the point that we're basing the value of our life and what we're worth by what we're doing. Right. And I think, you know, for us as women who are doctors and who are moms, there's so much that we do in that regard with measuring ourselves against our own standards that we put in our head. And that's not even to mention the external or extrinsic factors. Like if some, you know, some people, for example, really measure themselves against their peers or their colleagues or their neighbors or, you know, their, their friends, what kind of home do they have? What kind of car do they drive? For me, that's not as big of a pull. And I'm, I'm grateful for that because I think that would wear me out. But I, I'm, I'm sure for some people, that's also a pull. You know, how does so-and-so look and what are they doing and what, you know, what are they wearing and whatever. But for me, it's more, I think I have my own standards that I'm measuring myself against in terms of like, if I, if I think I have a little too much free time, I feel like, oh, I, I can take on a whole nother, you know, project or I'll get an idea. And it's just an idea that I want to do. It's not even like, I, it's not even like I think I'm not, not good enough just because I have free time, but it's just, you know, there's so much I want to do. Yeah. Cause it is amazing. Like when we do sit with ourselves and we're not caught up in the busyness, like those creative juices start to like kick up and that's kind of fun too, to have that experience. Mm -hmm. But then like my, my inner type A personalities be like, you don't have to do everything because as soon as I get a creative idea, then I'm ready to like jump on it. So many ideas I've had to let go. And sometimes I lament them. And sometimes I say, it's okay. You can't, you know, you, you can't do everything. Some, you know, another good idea will come along. <laughs> well, and what I tell myself too, because sometimes, um, you know, I'm always big about carrying like a notebook or post-it note or stuff with me. Or like when I get an idea, I literally used to like jump out of the shower and write it down. And now I've gotten to the point where I'm like, if it's supposed to happen, it will re, you know, I will rethink of it or it will come back again because I was stressing myself out even with that. Yeah. The shower is a great place for that. You get all these great ideas. And as soon as you got dried up and dressed, like they're gone, I can't remember them. <laughs> One thing I used to, my kids love the uh, bath crayons where you can write on the, um, the bath walls, not the regular walls, the bath walls. Yeah. And I can remember like when I first started my business, I was like writing a business plan on the wall in the shower <laughs> because like you said, there's something about like warm water and the smell of shampoo that it just gets those juices flowing. Well, tell me more about in your present like season that you're in with your contentment, what that's looking like for you. So now I have my first child has gone to college this year. So that uh, is an interesting change for a lot of the reasons that are obvious, like if they move away or just the fact that it's a big transition, but also somehow for me, it really brought me back to reflecting on my college experience also because she's going to my alma mater so i think that that really takes you on a trip through memory lane like no other um you know and then you're reflecting on on that and, and just thinking about how the time passed and different opportunities that came and went different decisions that you made and you know just the process of saying it's okay maybe i did make some mistakes or maybe i could have done some things differently or better but just trying to be happy with what you did accomplish and what you do have and the way your life looks right now. There's all this talk now about writing your own story and you, you really cannot go back and rewrite your story. And sometimes that can be hard. It can be a hard thing to accept. You can, you can write your story you know, differently going from today, maybe to a certain degree, there are some things you just can't change really, but, um, but you can't go back and change the past. And I think this time of transition in my life where my kids are a little older and I have a little more time, you know, that you don't have as much of the chaos in the home when they, when they're little, you know, you're always distracted by them. 
and uh, you know, to reflect on on my life and and how it has shaped up and the the things that I did and uh, trying to be to be complete with that and to be happy with that and to move past uh, sort of reflecting on it to a point where uh, it can sometimes be hard as well. Yeah, because we do like to go like. I don't know about you, like reread those past chapters and almost get wrapped up in it. And it's so important to remember that you still have so many fresh pages ahead. Yeah. And sometimes you don't feel like you have that many fresh pages ahead. I mean, you have to remind yourself of that. I think it's been cool too, to see as my children have grown, how they are their own people now and they're writing their own little stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll see as they get into their teen years and they start having their own ideas and their own opinions, uh, their energy, it can be very inspiring as well. Um, and so, you know, I think um, there are there are moments in my life where I think I'm ready for another big change. You know, like uh, sometimes I think when, when, I, when I was a little younger, that would have been something like, okay, having another baby or moving to another house or changing jobs or taking on something new. Um, and I, I think that right now I'm trying to tell myself, pause a little bit, you know, just take in this, this phase of life, just take in this moment and enjoy it. And it's okay. You still, you have time still to do other things. There's no rush. Yeah. I've had it best explained to me about seasons. Like so many times we're like, you know, when we're in winter, we're ready for spring or summer. And like, we really just need to embrace the season that we're in. Yeah, it's great to plan ahead for what's coming potentially, but you're so right about that. Like you could miss an entire part of your life by always future planning. I think that's part of what caught me up when I started early in my practice is I kept working towards the future, working towards the future, but I totally missed the present. Exactly. And I think that's why... I felt that contentedness is a subject that really relates to uh, uh, us in, in terms of medicine because we're all, we are always working towards the future. I, I was the type of kid who, my, my dad was a doctor, he's retired now, but like I was the type of kid who wanted to be a doctor since I was a kid. And I saw my dad, he, he was sort of one of those small town doctors that everywhere we went, like at the mall and at a restaurant and at the grocery store, everybody wanted to come and talk to him and they knew him, his patients and that sort of thing. And I, I don't know, I, I think that influenced me and in the idea of, you know, I always wanted to be a doctor since I was a kid. So I was always sort of looking to that next phase of life, you know, working through undergrad to get into med school and working through med school to get into a residency and, you know, working through your residency to get into a fellowship and then that to get into a job. And um, so it's hard to turn that off. And I think um, that is till, till this day very challenging for me. Yeah, definitely. Well, you mentioned the non-for-profit. I'm intrigued and I want to know more about this. Oh, so this is um, another thing where I, you know, I, I didn't know how to uh, just be content. and <laughs> I was always doing so many, too many things at once. Um, when I finished my residency, I, um, by that time, I already had uh, one kid that was almost four and another one that was almost born. Uh, so um, a couple, two to three years later, we, we've moved out of the area where we had trained and got our first jobs. And I put my kids in school and I just was like, I had this notion during my residency years, you know, that like maybe someday I'd like to try homeschooling. Just, I thought it would be so exciting and fun to like um, teach them things in unconventional ways and to let them really love learning and explore. And I just wrapped myself up in this idea. You know, I was just always think. oftentimes when you're really busy with one thing, you're really thinking about this other thing that you think you would be doing, right? Like, you're studying for a final exam and you're thinking if I had time, I'd be doing X, Y, and Z, but maybe you really wouldn't have. So it was like that. So then when uh, my oldest was like in second grade, halfway through second grade, I just got, I just was done. Like, I'm like, I pulled them out of school and I started homeschooling them. And I was working at the time. And so I was working two and a half days. And so I had them in this homeschooling co-op a couple days a week. And then I wanted to enroll my daughter in some religious education programming. Um, so we're Muslim and in our, in our uh, tradition, it's common to learn the Islamic holy book, which is the, the Quran and for people to study it and memorize it. So that's like um, something that's sort of a, a big deal to try to do. So I wanted her, I figured I'm homeschooling her. She's got some time by now. She was like in fifth grade, I think. So I, I had been doing this for a few years. So I wanted to get her together with a group of girls to, to study this and to do this in a way again, that was like, fun and like outside the box and not really like formal and 
not in any way um, upsetting to the kids or too serious. Or, you know, sometimes religious education can be kind of a put off for kids and it's too stern and it's, you know, so I wanted it to be like fun and loving and this and that. So I got her together with a group of girls and um, in order to sort of get it organized and hire a teacher and collect the funds, I thought, well, let's do this properly. And we, we, we started it as a nonprofit. And then in the coming years, it just grew until it became a full-time school, which is what it is now. And it's been 10 years. Um, and my daughter was only there that first year when it was a group of 12 girls in a basement. And I had never intended it to be this long-term project or, you know, a full-time school. So now um, I, I still am very much involved with this program. I sit on the board and it's a full-time school, uh, preschool through sixth grade uh, for boys and girls. It's, very, it's a little different than my original, um, what I was originally thinking it would be, but it has the exact same flavor and theme of just love and kindness and to the kids and positive atmosphere and just a really happy place to be. Uh, so, uh, so it's been really interesting to see it evolve and grow. Oh my gosh, that makes my mommy hurt just like swell in my chest because I've even told yeah. my husband that I'm like, I want to build like a small one room schoolhouse behind uh, our house and have all the neighbor yeah. kids. And you did it. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was never like a real goal of mine, but I was, you know, it's interesting how life takes you on these different paths. And, you know, there were many, there were many days over the years when I was like, why am I doing this? It takes up so much time. And I, I, my kids aren't even in it. You know, that was like the heartbreak of it. It was, and I saw it growing into something beautiful, but, um, it's, I, I still think it's this beautiful thing and it's a great place. It's a great school. It's a great program. And so even though my own kids aren't in it, you know, other people's children are benefiting and that makes me really happy. Well, and you're, you totally have gotten to write a paragraph in so many other children's story, you know, by provi providing them a place of education that, you know, is loving and not rigid and, yeah. and, and takes them as they are. That's so wonderful. Yeah. It, and that was, that was the thing from the beginning. Cause I looked at different things for my daughter and I just, I didn't want her in a place where she wasn't feeling, uh, complete where she couldn't be herself where she felt uncomfortable where anyone made her feel bad about herself you know and, and and I just didn't want there to be any kind of sternness or any negative feelings associated with that type of learning you know and uh and so I'm I've been grateful that it really did uh the the person that we hired the first teacher we hired is now the principal of the school and she really shared that philosophy we were really lucky that we you know came together in that way and, um, and then there was another mom uh, who I had sort of peripherally known uh, through the homeschooling co-op who started it with me. And uh, actually, I just had breakfast with her and we're, we're still working on this together. So the two of us are still very much involved. Uh, so it's been, it, it's been a nice process. You know, you develop some really close relationships with other people too. That's wonderful. I love it. And I find it totally inspiring. I know the other women who are listening right now, they're like, hot damn, she's an ophthalmologist <laughs> and on a school board that she created. I yeah. love it. <laughs> well, yeah, if other good. people hear this and are totally inspired, what's the best way for them to connect with you or get a hold of you? So one way they can connect with me is on Twitter. I'm RandiabMD. That's my Twitter handle. Um, and then I have my own website as well, randiab.com. Uh, and so they can find me there as well. I do a little bit of blogging, not a ton. And I do some patient education on their ophthalmology stuff. Um, and so they can find me there as well. Awesome. And what's the name of the school if you don't care to share it? Carriers of Light. It's in Wheaton, Illinois. Carriers of Light. Perfect. I will have all of that in the show notes for everybody who wants to check okay. it out. And we all need to hang out with you on social media. Well, thank you so much yeah. for coming to be a guest on Dr. Me First. And again, I am just totally inspired that the work that you're doing. Thanks for having me. It's really a pleasure. I admire your show. Dr. Diab makes a lot of great truth bombs in this conversation where she Oh, just brings so much, I think, to the forefront of what we truly need to do to have contentment in our lives. At one point in the conversation, she talks about thinking, am I enough? And I know every single one of us at some point, maybe not today, maybe not yesterday, but at least within the recent past, have thought that exact same thing. Am I enough? Am I big enough? Am I successful enough to do this, to step out, to say what I want to say, or ask for what I want to, to get? 
I think it's such an important truth to realize that that never goes away. And the only person who gets to justify your worth, the only person who gets to say yes or no if you are enough, is you. Because you are the one that determines when it's enough and when it's not enough. And so I think that's a really important truth to be like, yes, I am enough. And then what I love to do is encourage my clients to, do, to go fact finding. And what I mean by that is so many times we have thoughts in our head and that are just rolling, 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 coming past. And too many times we take those thoughts as facts and they're not. They're just thoughts that have brewed up in our brain. So what I want you to do is when a thought comes up like, oh, I'm not trained enough to speak on this topic, or I don't know if I can answer this patient's question thoroughly enough, I want you to stop and be like, whoa, what's the facts? What's the evidence on this? Am I a doctor? Yes. Am I trained? Yes. Have I passed all the damn boards and tests and everything that they've wanted me to do so that I can clinically do this? Yes. Have I done multiple years of practice? Yes. Have I interacted with enough case studies to justify this? Yes. That is your fact finding. It's not about the thoughts and feelings that come up with it. It's about finding the true facts and then recreating your thoughts and being like, yes, yes, I am enough. And you know what? When you start doing that, you start taking control of writing your own story on you writing the narrative on what your life is going to be. And that, my friends, is powerful. Well, I hope this kick of encouragement has been just that, a kick of encouragement for you. If you want to find out more about being a woman in the middle or living through middle age, finding contentment in middle age, I would highly encourage you to follow my friend Susie at Women in the Middle podcast. I recently started listening to her, and even though I'm a pre-middle ager, I have found some amazing truths on that. So go hang out with Susie and check out her podcast too, Women in the Middle. And as always, friends, remember, your life, your calling, your pulse truly matters. Love you. Bye. Bye.